Hola, welcome to the Good News Roundup, your weekly digest of what's going well in the world. Here are this week's positive news stories. First up, a story from your news hometown, where new public toilets are turning urine into fertilizer. Then a heartwarming story from the UK, where members of the public have tipped in to save a Kent tea room. We take a look at what Gen Z's have been up to lately and find that they've been teaching themselves all kinds of new skills. But over in Greece, a team of volunteers is cleaning up years worth of abandoned fishing equipment from the waters around Ithaca. And finally, we go to Turkey, where a rare beast has been spotted. Welcome to Lyon. As you may know, Lyon is the home of your news, and today we're taking you outside to show you a story happening right on our doorstep. And we thought, why would we stay in the studio if we can just go outside and show you? So let's go. Over the next few months, the city is testing a network of 16 revolutionary toilets that will recycle urine for use in agriculture. And not only that, but they will also provide much needed relief in the areas that need it most with a practical solution aimed at women. So it turns out installing toilets is not as easy as you might think because conventional ones need access to water and a drainage system. But Lyon's eco toilets are dry toilets. They do not use water which means they can be installed in places where it wasn't possible before. The female urinals have been specially designed and adapted to the female anatomy so that we don't have to touch the toilet bowl. Si nous avons une approche dans laquelle nous nous installons des équipements principalement à destination des hommes, nous contribuons en tant que collectivité, en tant que décideur public à viriliser l'espace public. À partir de là, nous avons une réflexion de chercher à dévirer cet espace, ces espaces, les rendre moins agressifs, moins euh, moins virils, tout simplement, et euh, permettre d'avoir euh, des, des lieux euh, équilibrés euh, par les différentes fréquentations. Tout cela contribue à euh, l'apaisement des, des, des lieux, contribue à la tranquillité, contribue donc à la sécurité et à la sûreté. Et donc, nous avons choisi d'installer ces ces toilettes dans des lieux qui favorisent euh, la co-surveillance, c'est-à-dire le fait d'être euh, euh, sans être trop exposé euh, sous le, le, le regard bienveillant des personnes qui passent autour. The toilets not only save on water, but they store the urine to be adapted as fertilizer. That's because urine is actually rich in nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen, a resource that is being depleted on the planet and is essential for agriculture. On a réussi à économiser 158 000 litres d'eau, donc ce n'est pas rien. Nous avons également 126 000 utilisations relevées en moins de trois mois. Nous avons récolté presque 35 000 litres d'urine. Incredible, right? Now let's go back to the studio. A sleepy seaside town in Kent, England, became the unlikely focus of international generosity last month after a tea room's owner's tragic plight hit the headlines. Steve Jackson was sleeping on the basement floor of the Jacksonwood Vintage Tea Room because he couldn't afford the patrol to drive home, the BBC reported. This is the bed I sleep on and this is the basement in my shop. I'm forced to do that because I can't afford the petrol for the round trip of 24 miles where I live. It'll be so devastating losing this shop that I've worked for. for four years. But what he didn't expect was that he would be flooded with donations and offers to help out after his story was featured on the BBC website. And his life took an unexpected turn. Volunteers showed up offering to work for him for free, a coffee company from Wales donated coffee beans, and he received thousands of pounds in donations from all over the country and beyond. A student even set up a GoFundMe page for him. It was just so overwhelming, the generosity of, not from just the UK, from around the world. I had a man ring me up from Australia. I couldn't believe that he was watching me in Australia. And with his Australian accent, he said, Good day, mate. He said he's coming over to uh, England soon and he's going to visit my little tea shop, so, um, which would be fantastic. And then I had, I had uh, people from Turkey. I'd, lady from Paraguay. Never in my life have, it, have I experienced the, the overwhelming support for a little tea shop. 
you know, for me, let, let, you know, let alone me, for the little, my little tea shop. And um, it's just so incredible. Um, you don't realize until it happens to you the generosity of the public. Mr. Jackson says his coffee shop is thriving as never before, and he has had to turn customers away. Although, you know, some of the news is doom and gloom, when you see this at first hand, then you realize it's not all doom and gloom at all. There's, there's um, you know, happiness out there. Um, there's happiness all about, and um, it's just amazing. If you thought TikTok was all dance crazes, lip syncing, and celebrity gossip, think again. New research shows that Gen Z's are turning to social media to learn new hobbies, such as origami, roller skating, tie-dyeing, and pet portraits. For the survey, carried out by Samsung for the launch of a new smartphone, 1,500 people aged between 18 and 25 were asked about their use of TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, with some surprising results. Three quarters of those surveyed said that they had been inspired to take up a new hobby as a direct result of watching clips on social media networks. More than half of those said that they spend four hours a week or more learning about these new hobbies on their smartphones. The most inspirational videos were found to be on extreme makeup, which is less about mascara and blusher and more about creating art for the face, meditation, digital illustration, and believe it or not, Cleaning. Yes, the youth of today is suddenly fascinated by mopping, vacuum, and laundry, inspired by a new breed of what are called clean influencers. The participants were asked which social media platforms were best for finding new hobbies, and TikTok came out on top, followed by Instagram and YouTube. The Greek island of Ithaca is famous throughout the world thanks to Homer's epic The Odyssey. It's currently in the news, however, for the eerie ghost farms sitting in its clean waters. These are created when discarded fishing nets and equipment are left in the sea, a problem compounded for Itaca because two fish farms that were abandoned a decade ago. Local NGO Healthy Seas named the sinister phenomenon ghost farms and says it poses a threat to marine life. So local residents took the issue online and Healthy Seas, along with another NGO called Ghost Diving, decided to help together with a dozen volunteer divers from the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, Greece, Lebanon and Hungary. The challenges of this project is the, the, the weight and the amount of the fishing nets. They are very, very big and uh, we have to drag them from 20 to 30, 35 meters of deep depth. Uh, the lifting itself is not dangerous, but uh, it's a lot of teamwork because the net is so huge, you really have to be careful that it does not break and come down again. The nets hauled out of the sea by the divers are stored in containers at Ithaca before being sent away for recycling. And the divers have made a real difference. Last year, they removed 76 tons of marine litter from the sea and coastline. And their goal this year is to train fishermen, locals, and visitors to help reduce the catastrophic pollution of the sea. And we leave you today with good news that we've been waiting to hear for years. An Anatolian leopard has been captured on camera in Turkey's eastern province. The leopard, which sits on the red list of globally endangered species, had not been seen for years. But the leopard was finally spotted in eastern Anatolia creating a great buzz among wildlife experts who say it is great news for the animal kingdom. If you've enjoyed this roundup and want to hear more good news, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know in the comments and share our stories with your friends. And if you've got a positive story you think we should share, send it to us by commenting below. And remember, it can be hard to find among headlines, but some news is good news.